why switching over to an earth tub system, it allows us to reduce our labor so we're not having to flip the pile once a week. Here's a bin full of our food waste. And we take this food waste from our customers and we process it uh, with dry ingredients uh, or browns, so sawdust, leaves, and uh, leftover components from our previous compost, woodier components that we sometimes get, like sticks. Um, we take that, we mix them, typically in about a 50 to 50 ratio. Uh, it's not an exact science when we're building the piles. Uh, we just as needed, but mostly what you want to do is have a, a pretty much a balance between your browns and your greens. There's plenty of moisture starting out in the food waste, so you don't have to add any water necessarily to it. We do add a little rinse water from our tubs once we're done cleaning them out after we finish transporting the compost. But other than that, mostly we don't add much water. And with the earth tub system, it actually keeps the moisture in so well, we don't have to add any supplemental water to our compost as it's processing. And what I'm gonna show you here is just how we mix our compost and then add it into the earth tub itself now these bottom uh, sections here are it's typically a clean out you can fill into the bottom early on if you prefer but typically you're going to be adding most of your compost into the bin system through the top as uh, the bottom fills up pretty quick and it's going to start falling out the side if you use the bottom here so most you're going to be adding into the top there is a bit of a lift there that you need to do um, but we just use a shovel and it has been a problem so far. Okay, so what I've got here is some more food waste in the tub. And then I've got another bin that we've picked up from one of our local hospitals. Um, just to kind of show you a little bit of some of the contamination issues that we run into with food waste. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with the earth tub, but I figured I'd film it anyways. So, we've got a trash can over here. And we get all kinds of plastic utensils, mayo packet, so and non-compostable uh, plastics mixed in with our food waste that we pick up from our clients. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind before you're going to load your earth tub. Pull your plastic out first, it's going to make it a lot easier. That auger that runs inside is very strong and will pulverize this stuff into much smaller pieces, which makes it much harder to pull out of your compost. So you're going to want to make sure and pick all this stuff out ahead of time. Okay, so we're going to be mixing our browns and our greens. We have raw food waste in the bin here. And what we do first when we're making compost is we actually chop up our food waste material. And we just use a basic bladed tool. I don't even know what this thing's called. Um, but we just go through and chop up our food waste into more appropriately sized chunks. Now that we've chopped up the food waste, we're going to add an approximately equal amount of browns to the compost. For this time, what we're going to be using is actually the larger components that got sifted out of our previous batch of compost that came out of the earth tub. 
You'll be able to see here that it's basically kind of like wood chips, a little bit of soil mixed in, the occasional sticker off of a piece of fruit. And so I'm going to try and put in about the same amount of brown material as this. Once we've added the brown material, I'm going to take a mixer and we're going to mix the food waste. For the mixing step, you just want to go through and mix it a little bit just to get the food waste kind of evenly coated a little bit to start out. And then you can just take what you have here and shovel it in. You don't have to do anything fancy or or really um, do anything highly technical or complicated. So just pretty much take your food waste, take your browns, mix them 50-50, you know, chop the food waste up a little bit before you do that, mix it up, and you're good to go. Before we load our earth tub, we do like to add a small layer of woody material to the bottom of the earth tub. Now I'm not actually sure whether or not this step is necessary, but there is an aerated grate here at the bottom of the earth tub with a bunch of little tiny holes in it. And you can see some of the holes are covered up, but most of them are uncovered. And the reason why we add the wood chips to the bottom is we just want to keep all of our really squishy and gross food waste kind of out of contact from the grate itself. So we just add a little wood chips into the bottom of our earth tub first before we load this. And that allows us to keep that aeration flowing well in the system. And the auger, if you'll notice, actually doesn't quite reach the very bottom of the bin. So that allows us to keep a small layer of wood chip down at the bottom of the bin. And that allows the aeration to continue without getting the grate clogged up and allows us to make consistently good compost. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually, before I'm gonna load this in, I'm gonna throw some wood chips into the bottom of this, then I'll load this up, and we'll be off our way on to making another batch of compost. Okay, now that I've grown some browns, uh, this is the leftover material from our sifted, last uh, sifted compost. This is actually material that came out of one of our hand turn piles. So it's a little drier. It's got some bigger chunks and less uh, additional soil attached to it. So I decided to use this because it'll it's got some bigger pieces. It'll help uh, keep the airflow through the grate uh, flowing well. So what I'm going to do here is now that I've gotten all of the wood chips into the tub. I'm going to just flatten them out with a mud rake, make sure it coats the bottom of the tub evenly. And again, that's to allow airflow to go through the grate easily so it doesn't get clogged up by any food waste smooshing against that grate. And of course, keeping the food waste from adhering to the bottom of the tub so then we don't have to scrape it off later. As you can see, that was pretty quick. It's not difficult. Um, and again, uh, this step is not necessary, uh, but it might be helpful, and uh, maybe it'll help some folks that are watching. Okay. So now we have our tub of mixed food waste. doing is taking the mixed food waste as you can see here it's 
fairly well mixed, and I'm going to dump it into the tub for the opening. Now, if you want to load the tub at different portion or in different sections, you can just spin the lid and load into a different section of the tub. For today, we'll probably be all, all loading into one side, and then sometimes we use a mud rake to move the material around inside the tub. Also, you can just turn the auger on and move it through the food waste, and that'll spread out in the bin as well. Now, the one thing about an earth tub is there is this lift. So when you're shoveling, you're going from ground level typically all the way up to shoulder height. For me, maybe a little bit lower than shoulder height from someone that's a little taller. Um, but it is, uh, it is a lift, um, and we're actually looking at some maybe building some kind of ramp system that'll make this process a little easier for us. Um, and that's one thing when you're looking into setting up one of these bin systems that you may consider doing it in a place where maybe at the edge of a loading dock or someplace where you have uh, a vertical drop off so you can actually load down into the bin um, instead of having to lift up to shoulder height. Um, that's one of our uh, one of the considerations that you might want to have when getting one of these. Personally, I don't find this to be all that difficult, but obviously, depending on your physical fitness and your willingness, 